everybody, hello, hello, and welcome back to Watch Dogs Wednesdays. I am running a teeny bit behind. Uh, just quickly making sure that everything is up and running properly. And uh, that. We go that way both Matt and Howie are getting some love back there. Just one moment. Range these windows. Go. There we go. Both Matt and Howie are streaming right now and just wanted to make sure that they're both getting love from me. Uh but uh yeah welcome back to watchdogs wednesday where where we play through the watchdogs game series um <clears throat> spun off from and from the assassin's creed series of games uh today we are starting their most recent game <clears throat> watchdogs legion which i have not played yet because like okay so i got watchdogs legion early on in my streaming right and I was like, it's been a while since I played one and two, so I want to play one and two. But you know what? Hey, let's, it, I'm playing through Assassin's Creed on stream. So let's, you know, but let, eventually because they cross the one spun off from the other, you know, they cross part. Uh, they cross paths a few times, you know, and so I was like, OK, OK, we'll we'll do the thing. We'll do we'll stream Watch Dogs, too as well, well we'll string watchdogs as well um so we did that and it gave me the opportunity to play through them all in the lead up to this one watchdogs legion i'm excited y'all i'm incredibly excited give me one quick second apologies to oh wait i know what Problem is back here. Oh, could change that quickly. That okay. All right, cool. All right, anyway. Oh. Hold on just a second. Okay, there we go. So anyway, announcements. Um next Friday I'm pr I'm going to be taking off Friday the 30th. Not this coming one. This coming one will be finishing um Sorry. <sighs> right, Friday. This Friday we'll be play. We'll be finishing. Tell me why. Next Friday, uh, I'll be taking that day off because Yvonne is having a watch party, uh, or planning to have a watch party that day, and I figured I would, you know let her have that day basically that night um at least that's the plan things may change next week i'll let you know um i have some stuff on monday that may not that will hopefully not affect my stream but just in case i may have to take monday off as well we'll see only time that one i won't know until the day of because of the stuff that i have going on that day um anyway what else do I have? What else? What else? Uh, those are the only real housekeeping announcements I have. Uh, I do have a link tree and a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Crimson Knight, as you can see on screen, uh, covering my face. If you go to either of those links, uh, you'll be able to support me. In fact, if you go to the link tree as well, you can support me. You can find other ways to support me other than through Patreon or Twitch. 
Um, just have a poke through those and uh, you'll be able to see uh, what I've got available, what where you can follow me and things like that. Anyway, do I have anything else? Anything else that might distract me? No. Okay. Let's get started. With Watch Dogs Legion. Okay, actually, one moment while I fiddle with some graphics stuff. Uh, not gameplay. Graphics. Video, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, we are looking for... Quality image? Looking washed out. I bet I know why. Let's turn off HDR. That help? I can't tell. Um, hold on. Sorry. Sorry, y'all. Give me a second. I don't want... Yeah, that, that's a little washed out. So let's turn that off. And then... If I also turn off this wait um, might be too late to do that if i turn this on yeah no uh okay i'm going to leave that off let's turn if i turn oh come on windows I turn that on, and turn that, go back to that. Uh. Yeah, okay, so I'm not noticing any difference between these two things, these settings, so we'll leave. You lost all concept of time? Go figure, you were playing Final Fantasy XIV. But welcome, Yvonne. Welcome, welcome. Glad you could make it. <sighs> okay, so we definitely are going to have that off. Um... Motion blur off. Um, okay. And That all looks fine. Um, well, maybe we do want to mess with this. Do we want to fuck with this? We want to fuck with it. Hmm. Leave the sharpness to where it is, contrast where it is. Okay.
Yeah, nope. Okay. Yeah, we're just gonna leave the HDR off. Okay. Alright. Sorry about that. How's it? Um, hold on. Yvonne, I'm gonna need your opinion, so I, I need your attack. Uh, I need you to. Uh, fuck. Brain. Video. Image. So this is with HDR on. This is with HDR off. And... This is with monitor HDR off. Like Windows native HDR, I mean. Um, I don't see a difference between uh, Windows HDR on and off uh in the, for the game yeah windows off windows windows hdr off made no difference yeah that's i that's what i wanted to check um because it was driving me crazy uh because i couldn't notice a difference and yes hdr off make it does look a lot better at least on the stream like it'll look because of the fact that i have a proper hdr monitor it will look completely different on my screen compared to on the stream. So that's that's why I'm messing with this stuff. For like Yvonne knows this. I'm just saying for anybody else watching this. Okay. And just to confirm everything is set to max. Okay. Alright. First step into the game. I have not clicked this button. I have not clicked this button before in my life. I'm excited, y'all. All right. Uh, new game. Ooh. Resistance mode is a challenging experience that puts dead sec on the back foot. London is more dangerous than ever, and Albion is out for blood. Uh, combat, str uh, combat, stealth, melee, and pursuits are dramatically more difficult. Fast travel is limited, and permadeath is on. Great for players looking for more immer for a more immersive and hardcore experience. Ooh. Oh. But Yvonne! Oh. But Yvonne! <laughs> More immersive! <sighs> Fine. Fine. All right. Uh, Iron Man. <laughs> I wonder what Iron Man means. Because if permadeath is on, what is Iron Man? With Iron Man mode, permadeath cannot be disabled during the playthrough. Okay, so no, we'll leave it off. And we'll stick on normal. It's the first time playing. Ugh. You hurt my soul. No, not really. All right. Yes. Fine. Fine. I don't even know if I have to move my camera for, for playing the, to play this game. Guess we'll find out. Ah, oh, London. What a town. History around every corner and a tourist <laughs> photographing it. Perhaps serving up a pint and a smile. All that music, theater and art and multiculturalism. And the world's oldest underground, the Tube. The class of cities, really. Top shelf stuff. Only took 12,000 years to build it up, and one night to tear it all down.
What's our status? Perimeter security's down, but plenty of your flying friends about. Fucking hell. Dalton, no time to waste. Yes, ma'am. I'm in. Any idea what we're up against, Bagley? If you haven't brushed off, I might. Ever consider leaving these security threats to the authorities? That's rich, Bagley. The government would sooner arrest us for trying to help than actually do something useful. Let us hold this one on our own. Carefully, Dalton. Bagley, are you detecting a little worry in Sabine's voice? Brilliant. Asking the computer about feelings. This explains so much. Shut it, you two, and get to work. There she is. That hurt you more than it hurt me. Yeah, yeah, I would think it did. Do us a favor and keep it quiet, Dalton. If they don't shoot me, I won't shoot them. How's that? Hold on just a second. I need to mess with some keyboard settings. All right. Um, what do I have you set to? Weapon wheel. All right. I might change that to you. Yeah. All right. You are getting changed. Oh. Okay. You're not you. You're F. Hold up. What is happening here? Oh. Okay. So I actually hold on. I have a watchdog's profile here. Let me. I didn't, which I didn't realize. So I'm looking for four leaf clover that I've overlooked before. There we go. That's what I want. There we go. Okay. Now let's reset the defaults. Yes, please. Okay. And we want to put on that quick hack is on that okay all right so we're gonna back up to here and just test okay cool 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 there we go sorry sorry controls are a thing
I'm being detected. Hi. Sorry, I didn't see you there. Their profiles are heavily encrypted. No identifying information. Uh, ghosts in this system. Ghost in the machine. Yep. My They're putting up dead sec graffiti. They've got loads of dead sec gear down here. <laughs> and why do you suppose that is? What? How did they get their hands on it? I don't know. But someone wants to make it look like DedSec was here. Shit. You need to proceed with extreme caution, Dalton. Who are these men in black, anyway? Nothing identifying. I suspect that's by design. Entire place is rigged to blow. Jesus, those canisters. Backley, is that? RDX nitrogen. Enough to level Parliament. Can you locate a detonator, Bagley? Not exactly, but there's a device streaming a fuckload of encrypted data from the floor above you. Yeah, that fits the bill. When you're on my way. When your computer AI swears. Bagley, is that not the detonator? No, but it's a transmitter sending a signal to a device on the floor above us. Safe to assume that would be the detonator we're looking for. Okay. Guess there'll only be three of them. Yes, come investigate, or not. Pricks are going to blow up Parliament and hang it on us. Not if you get to that detonator first.
Which one's an odd one for you? Is it the swearing AI? Right. right I just think it's comments. bloody cool. Whoever these men in black are, they've got brass bollocks to set up in the center of government. Does this guy look like Mark Wahlberg? A little bit. I think it's Mark Wahlberg I'm thinking of. You could Google Mark Wahlberg. I found the detonator. And it's definitely live. Bagley, I'm gonna need some help with this. Yes, you are, but sadly, I'm locked out. Fuck. Well, we don't have a chance without Bagley. Wait, I might know a workaround. We trained your manual overrides at MI5. You're full of surprises. Be quick about it. All right, Bagley, do your thing. I mean, it does look like Mark Wahlberg a bit. And the bombs have just armed themselves. Well, that may complicate matters. Fuck's sake. Can you defuse them or not? Of course I can. But I might also trip another failsafe and vaporize you. So fair warning. Expect Matt this Damon, to draw some too. Your way, Dalton. Oh, I'm counting on it. Company at our back door. Shit. Dalton, we've got some heat here at HQ. How long is this going to take, Bagley? Depends how often you interrupt me with questions. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. It's about to get real. <clears throat> Fuck. They're on me. I'll try and hold them off. P9, MP5, fists, and electroshock traps. Ooh. Huh? Bagley, update. Let's just say I'm both impressed and annoyed by how sophisticated this anti tamper security is. Still working. Bagley, tell me you're close. I'm through security, now wading through terabytes of decoy code looking for the detonation sequence. I need your physical appendages now. What's wrong? There are three slots on the left. One of them is the receiver. You need to pull the controller wire. Are you fucking kidding me? No, I'm fucking not. Pull the wire. <laughs> if this gets me blown up... Diffused. <laughs> See, that wasn't so bad, was it? Bagley, you bastard. You're gonna give me a bloody heart attack then. <laughs> whoa, 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 what the fuck am I looking at? It appears Parliament is not the only target. More bombs are going live as we speak. On screen, Bagley. Fucking hell, we need to get the word out. Those sites need to be evacuated. They're spread out all over London. There isn't any time. But my sister's at the town conference. We have to do something. 
I picked up a transmitter on the roof that is sending out a signal to the other bomb sites. If you can reach it, I can shut it all down. Sabine? Fuck! Dalton, we're breached! Go! The roof! Sabine, what's going on? We're being raided. It's a bloodbath. Her protocol is to wipe everything, including Bagley. I need him for the transmitter. I know, but if they get him, they get everything. Names, opt, locations. Okay, I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Wipe him. Yes, wipe me. Do it, Sabine, and get the hell out of there. Fuck. Okay, Bagley's down. You're on your own. Dalton, if this goes... It won't. I'll see you at the rally point. I promise. Good luck. with some important work. Important work? Killing thousands of... Exactly. To save the world. You do know Londoners have died before. Hmm? The plague, the Great Fire, the Blitz. There's not much fun. But destruction is always the cure. And it begins today. Zero day. Oh my god. Ago, a series of explosions devastated three sites in London. Authorities are asking residents to remain in their homes as the situation continues to develop. We have received no official casualty total, but it is expected for a series of candlelight vigils that brought closure to thousands of families and indeed to an entire city. London is now laser focused. Day 10 Downing Street, where Nigel Cass, CEO of private military company Albion, received a mandate to secure London. Cass has vowed to hunt down dead set terrorist used cutting-edge artificial intelligence systems and autonomous drones to capture the remaining members of DedSec. A stark warning to would-be insurgents. Corporations are posting record profits due to increased efficiencies in production and distribution, enabled by the use of technologies initially developed and approved for security purposes. It's a long overdue cleanup as crime numbers take a dive. Illegal gambling, drug trafficking and prostitution all down 
following prosecutions of the leaders of four of London's five largest criminal syndicates, the streets of Camden and Brixton. As Albion's mandate is extended indefinitely by the government, life finally begins to return to normal. Curfews and travel restrictions have been lifted in all boroughs, thanks to the deployment of news outlets. Reports of rioting in Trafalgar Square have been greatly exaggerated, possibly by foreign meddlers pushing a false narrative through social media. Albion is in complete control of a few... Red command the public about the circulation of fake news, conspiracy theories persisting in dark corners of the internet, that terrorist group DeadSec were framed for the bombings, have been roundly rejected. Our own reporters could not find a single Londoner willing to expound those theories on camera. The facts simply do not support any other story. Well. I wonder if I need Albion to assemble is... a team, but I can't reboot DeadSec alone. Let me break into London CTOS and see who's available. I wonder if they're connected to, uh... Fuck. Bloom. I'm Claire Waters, and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group, DeadSec, on this week's Buccaneer Radio. I have Colin calling in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have round up dead sick and thrown them in jail. Now, I'll say they should all be lined up and shut. You don't find it awfully convenient that they've been fingered as the attackers, but we've seen no proof. Look at town! Look at our city! What more proof do you need? Well, Colin, I'd say you have to look at their history of non-violent action. Albion's put more civilians in the hospital in the past few months than dead sick ever has. I smell a scapegoat. Now I have Emily calling in. Emily, what's your take? You're absolutely right, Claire. The government's just framing DeadSec because they want to make it seem like they have this under control. They probably have no clue who was behind the bombings. But that doesn't look good on the news, does it? DeadSec's been a thorn in their side. Who better to pin it on? Angie, I have you next. What do you make of all this? I think of everything. Huh? DeadSec showed their true colors. It's terrifying to think we harbored such a dangerous element for years. Terrorists in our own backyard. Do you find DeadSec more frightening than the different gangs in London like Clan Kelly? Clan Kelly might set your shop on fire and maybe they'd kill you, but even they wouldn't try to blow up all of Parliament. Next, I have Crypto King. Do you feel safer using a pseudonym? Everyone should. Why make it easier for them to track you? And now we've seen what they're capable of and how far they're willing to go. Hold on. Do you mean the government? Are you suggesting the government was responsible for the bombings? Oh, trust me, Claire. They didn't do it alone. They're all in on it. The government, Albion, Sirs, Bloom, Sky Bloody Larson, and all the way up to Downing Street. They want to keep us scared. Harness us with, with mind control. Suck every last ounce of usefulness out of us. And, and even in death, they'll sell off our bodies. And what do you suggest we do, Crypto King? Go underground. Deep enough, no electric signal can get you. It's the only way. Let's get the people of London on board. Select my first three operatives. Okay, so we have Terence Boyle, a counterfeiter, discharged from the armed forces for insubordination. Zetsek helped erase his criminal, or their criminal record. A29, counterfeiter. Got an uncle, they've got an uncle and an, an accomplice, skilled driver, donates to right wing organizations. Ah, probably a no, that's probably a no for me, dog. 
Uh, serve time for blackmail. Yeah, it's probably a no for me, dog. All right, how about this person? Dorota, 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 Grabowski, football player, completed a marathon with a broken ankle. Damn! Dead Tech helped their family gain political asylum. Okay. 39, footballer, cousin and a sister. The MI scale is a load of shite. <laughs> Streams, action films, researched Canadian immigration requirements, born in Warsaw, Poland, searched for how to never interact with anybody. <laughs> Okay, so I think she's I think she's going to be one or they are going to be one uh, Nikita Vinogradov 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 however approached by Albion after hacking MMO servers 22 uh, saved them from a riot drone that misidentified his target yikes uh, anyway age 22 drone racer uh, So they'd, they'd come with a drone summon ability and fast hacking, okay uh Sister and accomplice subscribes to online betting sites. <laughs> that could be a weakness. Uh, not a registered voter. Searched for blood in stool. Awkward. Born in Sunderland, England. Started anime club in high school. Maybe. Ooh, I like your hair. Yasemin Iqbal, musician, creates fake coupons. Studded truncheon as a melee weapon. Loyalty card for discount clothing. <laughs> uh, DeadSec leaked footage of them being beaten by Albion guards. Dang. 19. Dang. They have a therapist. Valid. Uh, injured in mosh pit. Born in Kolkata. Uh, donates monthly to women's shelters. Posted multiple selfies at Westminster Abbey. Lost savings and market collapse. Okay. Oh, cheerio, Alfred. Alfred Sweet, investor, has a private phone line to the police commissioner. Ooh. He has a police contact, so he's got a shorter arrest time. Uh, signing bonus... ETO gain on recruit. Interesting. Uh, DeadSec exposed a corrupt politician trying to blackmail them. Okay. Uh, it's 56. Investor, blah, blah. Got a bookie. Potential problems. Uh, let's see here. Banned from a gaming group over accusations of rules lawyering. <laughs> Attends international film festivals. Own stock in Broca Tech. Inactive dating profile. Brooke Parker, hairstylist. Wrote a five star review of the Earl's P Fortune Pub. <laughs> Hard drinker, so they do extra melee damage. <laughs> a tough drunk, so they take less damage. <laughs> Dead Tech helped clear them of a false murder charge. 55, hairstylist. Uh, Judith Parker, is a, they have a sister and a cousin. Classic film buff, owes 25,000 in credit card debt. Licensed esthetician. Uh, frequently signs up for weight loss programs. Charges related to anti-war protests dismissed. Okay. Okay, Brooke. Oh, hey, man. Albert Powell is an orderly. Worked in a children uh, works worked or works in a children's hospital overseas. Okay, so worked. He's got a little dirt gun. Unique weapon. Okay. Priority care so you get shorter shorter injury time. So, DedSec took down an extremist group that was targeting them. Dang. Okay. 59 orderly Anitha Reddy Joe Joshi allergic to peppers 
searched for head of Clan Kelly, accrued over five thousand dollars or pounds in credit card debt. Ask Bagley, how often do I need to renew my CPR training? Uh, and mother went missing in tone bombing. Oh. Brittany Donican, cashier, banned for life from the London Zoo. Banned for life from the London Zoo. They have an MP5 and an evasive dodge roll. DedSec helped catch their friend's murderer. Okay. Uh, age 24, Sabelle Don Donican. Robert Lee is their best friend. Searched for good pool hustling techniques. <laughs> Witnessed murder of their parents. Yikes. Search for shrug emoji. Copy paste. <laughs> Donated to crowdfunding campaign cat dating. Prescribed anti-inflammatory medication. Yo, that hair though. Ooh, that jacket. Okay. Julie Davies, unemployed. Cited for kneeing Albion Guard in the groin. Did I look at, oh, okay, yeah. Dead Sex saved their friend from a trafficking ring. Yikes. Uh... Reviews interactive fiction. Searched for best full coverage makeup. Regular, regularly writes the home security to protest sirs. Brags online about breaking into sirs headquarters. Listed religion is Christian on census. They get a shotgun and they have an Albion vendetta. Yeah. Okay. How many of these? Just six more? Okay. Noah Paul, an internet celebrity, failed motorcycle license test. So they'd have, they have a, por a personal motorcycle and a paintball gun. Okay. Internet celebrity. Dead sex saved their friend from being wrongfully deported. Uh, plays games exclusively on consoles. Pass. Pass. No, <laughs> maybe. Uh, voted off of reality show by other contestants. Started anime club in high school. I mean, he kind of looks like he did. Like, let's be real here. He really has the look of someone who did. He's an aspiring model. Question by sirs for content of a text message. Next. Maddie Baker, a performer. Uh, let's see, what's her? Ooh, she's got a personal sports vehicle and has chase drone immunity. Ooh. She recently purchased a damn expensive sports car. Re Dead Sec rescued them from a Clan Kelly assassin. Clan Kelly being a gang. Uh, 34, former. Wonder what kind of performer, but I don't wanna ask. Donate to her, uh, to her just fans. Um, recently donated to the National Gallery. Social media login compromised. Somebody hacked her social media. Prescribed estrogen blockers. Watched video Becoming Confident Making Friends and Admin of Internet Encyclopedia. Okay. Brad October, Blockchain Specialist. Oops. Uh, runs Hacker Forum on Dark Web. Uh, dude, I love his hair. Um, has a hack to cause drones, the drones to betray. He has fast hacking abilities. Uh, DedSec uncovered the government was responsible for their friend's death. Dang, the T! Prescribed testosterone blockers. 
sent contact links to flat earth conspiracy videos participated in multiple game jams dreams asmr videos <laughs> prescribed medication for high blood pressure i mean if you're a flat earther you're gonna have high blood pressure um <clears throat> sky tyranny poet former cryptographer shock hack and 6g data plan so she has fast da downloads uh dead sec helped save their neighborhood from demolition age 50 poet blah blah oh oh if, <laughs> you probably you, do you see can you see it is my camera in the way Yvonne is my camera in the way I think my camera is in the way here let me let me let me let me let me turn off my camera for a second oh Yvonne Yvonne it doesn't say friend it just says sex worker it doesn't say their friend who is a sex worker it just says sex worker what implication what implication <laughs> what are they implying <laughs> has breast implants you know looking at it i can kind of tell um like don't take that the wrong way lady just saying um denied bank loans born in northern ireland campaigned unsuccessfully to establish brixton barrier block estate a cctv free zone attended women's rights marches okay maybe <clears throat> uh mr lewandowski leon lewandowski former union represent former union rep hey got a wrench hey <laughs> uh dead sector recovered their citizenship documents held hostage by an employer damn girlfriend is samantha chung invested 500 pounds in oil posts online show bar fight purchases contraceptives smart it's you know gotta be safe edited articles about uh polish influence on french fashion completed acting lessons okay okay yvonne we need a fit review of this one right get in my voice chat i need a i need a i need a i need a review here Dead sec helped save their family from homelessness. They're 21. Okay. All right. Fair enough. That's fair enough. Posted a review of the National Gallery uh, of the National Galley Pure Pure Wank. <laughs> uh, Dead sec helped save their family from homelessness. <laughs> Plays games exclusively on PC. <clears throat> Nothing against consoles. I love consoles. I have plenty of console games back here. But, you know, when you're right, you're right. Uh, human rights spokesperson uh, arrested for throwing pie in Albion captain's face. Auctions used undergarments. Yeah. I mean, they don't say Reddit, but yeah. Yeah. You got you to gotta get that money somehow when you're an illustrator. Yvonne. Yvonne, she is who you could be. All you gotta do, all you gotta do is throw a pie 
in a cop's face, in a cop captain's face. That's all you and sell your your under your used undergarments online. That's all you gotta do. Okay. She's got a fucking crowbar! <laughs> <coughs> Dang! Okay. Okay. Alright, she's won. She's won by far. I gotta. I gotta. I get now I got to pick two more. Um Um, let's see here. Alright, so we'll say she's the combat one. So it seems there seems to be three general types of characters at this point. Combat focused, um hacking focused, and utility what I would term as utility. So we got the combat focus, which are those who come with either their own weapon or perks for that. So we got Madeline, who's got that. Um, we've got Mr. Uh, Lewandowski here with his wrench. Uh, we got Brooke here with her fucking hard drinker, tough drunk combo here. We got the football player, uh, Ms. Ms. Grabowski here. Um, uh, who is the... Albert here with his dart gun. You know, um, and then we've got like Maddie here, who's got actually. Maybe Albert, but uh, then we got Maddie here, who's got like, you know, a car, a nice car and some anti chase stuff. Oh, and we've got some. Um, Sky here, who's got some, who's got the fast download stuff, and um, there was another, there was another one. Brad here with his drone hacks and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking her. Oh wait, wait, wait. Thinking her because of the car. Um, I'm leaning him. This is the dart gun, the unique weapon, and, you know, all that. Um, and also they're medical. Now, I could go with the internet celebrity guy instead of her, but actually. Yeah, I'll cover him because he's got a unique weapon and his own bike. Um, he's internet celebrity, which means he's going to have a recognizable face. Potentially. I don't know how deep they go with this stuff, you know? I like her or them. I like them. <sighs> but they're damaged.
Mr. Albert has a cop contact. What do you think, Yvonne? I know you're playing Final Fantasy XIV, but I want to know your opinion. She, which, which she? I was ta I was asking about an in general. Which do you think I which do you think? Cuz we got her. Right? We got Madeline West. Bottom row left, Sky. Former cryptographer. The breast implants. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I can see that. She's got that fast downloads ability and the shock act to electrify enemies. Okay. Fair. All right. And then do we want to go with... Mr. Police Contact, who's got a friend in the cops who can shorten arrest time or... Chica, Chica, who's got a nice car. Or do we want this badass right here? Or do we want Mr. Medical here? Or, uh... Yes, I mean... Dorota. There's so many good options. Yeah. Mr. Alfred. Cheerio, Alfred. Um But you want the badass. Uh We could also go with the the rich chick who um the car too, you know? Like, look at that car. Shorter injury time, which means they heal up faster. My face is kind of blocking it at the moment, but this guy's got uh, sh quicker heal time uh, for injury related stuff. Um... Seriously, though, he has a private phone line to the police commissioner. Ah. Like, that would be hella fucking useful. But also... But also, you know? Now, these aren't the only characters that I can choose, right? So one of the things this game did advertise when they were talking about it before it was released was that you can basically recruit almost anybody in the entirety of London. So like, 
there is no guarantee. Like, I could run into Julie Davies on the street and still recruit her later, you know? Or I could run into somebody who I like better, you know? I'm leaning her. I'm leaning Maddie. Oops, that's not the button I meant to push. Uh, this is the button I meant to push. I'm leading Maddie. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Maddie. Okay. Glad to see you're alive. If you're still committed to the cause, DedSec needs you. I'll send you the coordinates to our last safe house. Meet me there. Fine. Okay, hold on a second. How do I open my... Smartphone. Okay, so smartphone is tab. Okay. I'm Claire Waters, and we've been discussing the hacktivist, now alleged terrorist group, DedSec, on this week's Buccaneer Radio. I have Colin calling in. Colin, what's your take? Now, I've been saying from the start we should have round up DedSec and thrown him in jail. Okay, so that's the thing we were listening to before. Okay. Auto drive now enabled. Auto drive now disabled. Auto drive now enabled. Auto drive now disabled. Auto drive. Like, I love auto, the concept of auto drive, but it's taken for fucking ever.
told you to stand the fuck back. I was just walking past you, dude. Calm down. National crime statistics report a 37% reduction in violent crime over the last year. Albion is working for you. Yeah, I downloaded a patch to your optics so you can access our security system. It's set up so that I can't just let someone who isn't dead sec in. You'll have to do the manual override. I'm not thrilled about getting my hands dirty, but I suppose one does what one must. I spit in the face of all the cabbies will crawl these streets. Learn in Sabine's are you? I'll see you downstairs later then. Oh. Hold on a second. Let me check something. Actually, no, it wouldn't be here. It would be in here, probably. Watchdogs Legion, there we go. All right. Oh, yeah, no, that would be that. Um, uh, no, I'll leave it. I'll leave it how it is and I'll just get used to it. In for a penny. Dank, pitch black cellar, just what I was hoping for. From the Buccaneer, this is the bug. Hello, resistors, it's bug time. Are you all sitting comfortably? No. Good, that's as it should be. This is The Bug. I'm Andy, and joining me to analyse the latest blowflies to emerge from the corpse of a once free Britain, it's Alice. Hello, Andy. And today, we're going to talk to you about Albion, uh, your friends and mine. Alice, the government has extended Albion's contract and have also boasted that violent crime has plummeted to a record low. Now, extending Albion's contract, to me, that's like having a pet dog, let's call it Nigel for the sake of argument, that attacks you every single day and thinking to yourself, wouldn't it be nice if Nigel had puppies? <laughs> that contract has been extended so many times, it's like the neck of a politician that's criticised the government. <laughs> I'm not sure entirely how those contract extension negotiations went, probably, like, like, a, like a footballer. In the old days, I assume Albion's agent was leaking stories to the press about how our favourite private militia was being tapped up by Barcelona or by <laughs> Munich. The government panics and thinks, well, we better get them signed up before it's too late. But still, violent crime, a record low, although I imagine that probably depends exactly how you count it. If you include violent crime committed by the state, either themselves or via Albion, their chosen violent crime contractors, who provide such a very valuable bargain service of beating people up, well, it's probably not quite as low as the figures 
suggest. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think they're probably right. Who has the opportunity to commit violent crime these days anyway? The moment you pick up a fruit knife, you get tasered by a robot policeman and deported for looking Bulgarian. <laughs> it's a much more peaceful society. It's just much less of a society. I want to know the details of the contracts. Alice, I mean, are they paid per dissident duffed up? Is it, is it a set rate for each extrajudicial state mugging? And what is that rate? What do you think? Well, they certainly look like they're trying to hit a quota of some <laughs> kind. <laughs> well, what, is the, what is the set rate? Is it what, 99 9.95 cryptos bargain. It seems very reasonable indeed. <laughs> I, I imagine they don't ask too much anyway. Because it's just so nice to get paid for doing your hobby anyway, isn't it? I imagine it doesn't even feel like work. <laughs> I mean, who needs violent crime anymore anyway? You know, you can just starve to death without even starting a gang war. We do have to ask exactly what does the Prime Minister make of all this. Uh, let's ask him. <laughs> oh, I, I hope they pick up. Hello, you're through to number 10 Downing Street. Hello, is the Prime Minister there, please? <laughs> Let me just check. Sorry, you've missed him. I'm afraid he's popped out for the decade. Oh, never mind. Is there anyone else I can talk to? Yes, of course. There's a shady cabal of vested interests who control him and prop him up in power. Great, I'll have a chat with them then. Oh, Andy, remember when you'd get away with prank calls without people coming round to your house to beat the shit out of you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy time. You're listening to the bar. Did you think the Prime Minister will, will, will ever come back? I don't think we've ever had a Prime Minister. Well, that's a much more reassuring way of looking at things. <laughs> what have we become, Alice? When you look at the state of our politics, we're supposed to have the mother of parliaments. Well, this is one mother that has emphatically abandoned her kids in the woods to be brought up by wolves. And let me tell you, that never works out like it does in the stories. Wolves are bad parents, <laughs> uh, unless you're a wolf, in which case they can do a job bringing you up as a wolf. Do not give your children to wolves. And do we actually own anything as a country now? Is there anything we haven't flogged off for profit? Oh, I think we've basically just become a homeopathic Britain. Yeah. Diluted and diluted until there's barely a trace of the original Britain left. But some quackish lunatics insist it actually works better that way. It's total bullshit. Is there anything left? New on the bug this week, a new feature, the bug off feature. Uh, the person who has most irritated us uh, in Britain uh, this week, we're going to tell to bug off and to get things going. I'm going to nominate uh, Big Nigel, Nigel Cass. Look, this is Britain. Uh, history tells us this place is a bastion of freedom. I'm just not sure that that kind of freedom should involve Big Nigel expressing his freedom to run a private army. I guess. Historically, there is a precedent, the East India Company. That was a trading house with an army of 250,000 soldiers, which is a lot for a company. The Bug PLC has Alice with a water pistol. But crucially, <laughs> compared with Albion, the East India Company didn't operate its quarter of a million strong army in London. Uh, it did it a long way away, <laughs> out of sight, out of mind. Anyone to nominate for, for the Bug Off, Alice? I think today's Bug Off for me goes to my streaming service. I'm sick of being recommended things based on things I already like. The other day it recommended me to watch a reality TV competitive dating show set in a nude commune. Andy, I watched it and I liked it and I do not want to be the kind of person who enjoys nude competitive reality television dating shows. <laughs> I did not want to know that about myself. I have to go sit in the corner and cry. That's it from the Bug. Don't forget the live show that is so secretive is definitely I not happening it. at the usual time and place this month. Definitely not. And definitely do not not tell anyone not, not to come to it. It's definitely not happening. <laughs> usual time and place. Bye-bye. That was amazing. That was fucking amazing. All right. Let's, let's take a look-see around here. We've got... I, no, let's just actually go to the fucking thing. registration detected. Identify yourself or I'll seal the exit, hack your optic and read you every drunken email you ever wrote until you starve. I'm with Sabine. Who the hell are you and why do you sound like a mobile phone? Sabine's alive? Well, that's one piece of good news. I'm Bagley, DedSec's definitely not stolen, highly advanced AI assistant, and it seems I've been out of commission for a few months. Anyway, definitely why don't you go stolen. connect me to the DedSec network so I can become more powerful than you could possibly imagine? I mean, catch up on what I missed. Oh, I already love this game. I am already in love with this game. Oh. Floppy disk. Ah! Floppy disk! 
relic. Ouch. True, but ouch. Ooh, look what I found. Coming up today on The Upload, we're talking about Sky Larson, the enigmatic founder of Broker Tech. Everyone knows her name, but no one knows too much about her. And we only really see her these days as a hologram. She was pretty young when she launched Broker Tech, the company that is best known for introducing Bagley to the world. Nowadays, it's hard to remember a world before Bagley. And I think that what Sky Larson's done with Bagley is absolutely incredible. Bagley is the most advanced, significant AI of our time, and it's really blown all the other AIs that were created out of the water. Yeah, I mean, I can't really imagine the optic without it. But what do you know about Sky Larson herself? Um, not a lot, other than that she's actually pretty incredible. I've followed her work for a long time, and she's always been a pretty private person. I know that she supposedly grew up in the countryside, but there isn't actually that much more we know about her other than this tech that she's put out into the... Wearable mask? Ooh. I didn't mean to end that. Coming up in today's episode of The Upload, we're talking about how Bagley managed to conquer... Coming up in today's episode of The Upload, we're talking about how Bagley... Coming up today on... Coming up today on The Upload, we're talking about Sky Larson, the enigmatic founder of Broker Tech. Everyone knows her name, but no one knows too much about her. And we only really see her these days as a hologram. She was pretty young when she launched Broker Tech, the company that is best known for introducing Bagley to the world. Nowadays, it's hard to remember a world before Bagley. And I think that what Sky Larson's done with Bagley is absolutely incredible. Bagley is the most advanced, significant AI of our time, and it's really blown all the other AIs that were created out of the water. Yeah, I mean, I can't really imagine the optic without it. But what do you know about Sky Larson herself? Um, not a lot, other than that she's actually pretty incredible. I've followed her work for a long time, and she's always been a pretty private person. I know that she supposedly grew up in the countryside, but there isn't actually that much more we know about her other than this tech that she's put out into the world. I've always found it a bit creepy that she's so obsessed with this idea of transhumanism. Why wouldn't you be when you've got a mind as amazing as Skye's? Why wouldn't you want to take what you've got? and actually augment it by working with technology, by improving your physical self, changing your body and the world around you, implementing more technology to extend your life and really sort of extend human capabilities. You sound pretty much in love with Sky Larson, I have to say. I can't comment on that, but I am a big fan of her work. She's been one of these people that has transformed the world around us, and just watching how her mind works from afar is pretty incredible, because some of what the technology she's introduced has changed how we all live our lives, and Bagley has been this really incredible assistance to humanity as a whole. Did I ever tell you that I actually interviewed Sky Larson once? Really? I thought she never spoke to the media or anything. So this was a long time ago, back in the day when she was a little bit more accessible and she was one of these people that just had an amazing presence. You were inspired by her very being, and she was just incredibly talented and knowledgeable and one of possibly the best living people that I've ever met. I'm not sure you're being too objective there. I mean, I imagine she's not very likable as a person. She obviously despises humanity in some way. I think she believes that becoming data is preferable to being human. She's one of these people who is extremely methodical in everything that she does, and she does everything to perfection and really tries to change the world around her and make it a better place for us to live in. If you say so. Okay. Give me one second, because I just realized I do actually need to move my camera. Hold on. Let us. Things are going to get a bit weird. Uh, yeah, OK, so move this down here.
least for now. We go. All right, and there was also oh, fuck, one button. Uh, data, and then there was the. This Coming one. up in today's episode of the upload, we're talking about how Bagley managed to conquer London. Pretty much my favorite topic. I could talk for hours about the rise of the AI system. It's easy to forget about its origins. It's so present everywhere we go now. Bagley just kind of blends into the background. Bagley is the service AI that's present in every optic device. Whether you're using the optic, Bagley will be there. The AI is streamed to your optic from Bloom Central Command Center, and it was first created by Sky Larson, our tech hero, as part of her techno utopian idea for the world. Why do you think it grew so quickly? In my mind, it's no surprise that Bagley became so popular. It's funny, useful, fast. It's a great companion and really just makes life so much easier. I mean, when you look back at all the service AIs that used to exist, they just can't compete. When you ask Bagley anything, there's a quick answer and loads of information available to you. One day, I let Bagley answer all of my messages for a whole 24 hours, and no one even noticed the difference. The other competitors really just couldn't compete with Bagley. Their answers were so much worse, they didn't understand anything, and Bagley pretty much gets everything right first time. Do you have any idea why Bagley really beat all the competition? Well, it's really the data, isn't it? Ever since Broker hooked up with Bloom, that's when things changed. And really, that's not actually that great. Bloom has data on everybody. They collect information about everything you're doing across the web through your optic headset. Isn't the AI only good because of Bloom surveillance? Well, I suppose so, but I would prefer not to talk about that side of things. Bagley is so special because it's been trained on this huge cache of information. That's how these AI systems work, or at least used to work. I mean, we don't really know that much about the latest version because there's so much secrecy around the tech, but they're given this huge amount of training data. It's basically a huge database that's used to teach the AI about patterns in behavior. You know, so if you always travel the same way to your house, it can predict when you're going to go and get a self-driving car ready for you before you even ask for it. That's pretty terrifying. In some ways, I don't want this data to, sort of to drive my life. It understands too much at times. Have you heard some of the rumors around the hacked version of Bagley? I've heard mutterings, yes. I've heard it's been used by DeadSec. I wouldn't put it past them. It's pretty well known that they're not fans of Bloom. But the idea of a souped-up version of Bagley, given it's already so intelligent, is a bit terrifying. I wonder what they could actually make it do. Okay. Hello, and welcome back to the upload. Hello and welcome back to The Upload. In this episode, we're talking about CTOS 3.0, the city operating system that's now powering all of London. For those of you who need reminding, as if anyone does at this point, CTOS was first used in Chicago in 2014 and then at San Francisco in 2017 before coming here to London. And every time it's been rolled out, it's been pretty much an unmitigated disaster. For those of you who are listening who are lucky enough not to be here in London's chaotic scenes, it's worth remembering that the Telecoms Tower is now owned by Bloom. The tower looms over northwest London. It's always been a communications hub, acting as part of the UK's television and communications network, although there's been some secrecy around its use. And now that Bloom owns it, it's only even more secret. Yeah, now everything that's part of Bloom's city surveillance operation is run through the Telecoms Tower. And I have to say, it looks completely ridiculous. It's got that silly crown thing at the top and all the blue light. What's that even about? What does it do? I don't see that there's any purpose to that at all. It's a blight on the skyline, if you ask me. And it's become the main point of control for millions of people. The system network and Bagley are both operated and streamed from there too. And don't forget about the self-driving cars too. I always thought they were just running on their own. No, CTOS is the big control system behind the cars. 
There was a point back in the earliest days of self-driving car technology that they operated by themselves. They used to use a series of sensors to see the world around them. Radar, for instance, would look far off into the distance, while LiDAR would detect objects nearby. And while these cars still use uh, some of this technology, Bloom's CTOS and its detailed maps and data that it has on London really makes Bloom be able to take control of it. And CTOS can take control of your car if you're parked incorrectly. It's no surprise that it was made mandatory to have a self-driving car. The system is so bad though, it's so annoying. Whenever I try to use one of the shareable self-driving cars, I always find myself stuck in traffic jams or roadblocks. Not to mention the accidents, I've heard so many stories of cars shunting into the back of others. I think they're worse than human drivers sometimes. The technology was meant to make things better, but Bloom has made it so bad that it just makes London even more chaotic than it was before. I'm giving up on the cars, I'm only using the bikes which are not self-driving at the moment at least. And don't even get me started on the data. Everything that Bloom sees from your movements around the city and the self-driving cars is collected and feeds back into its big information control system. Oh, not you and Bloom and Privacy again. You're a broken record. Not as broken as our city's cars. Dang. I mean, fair, but dang. All right. All right, Bagley, what we got for you? Ah, that's it. I'm reconnected to the network. Downloading our database, use archives, and oh. Oh, oh no. Terrorist group DedSec responsible for deadly bombings in London? Dalton Wolf dead? I leave you people alone for a second and you immediately cock it all up. So, Bagley, if not DedSec, then who was behind the bombings? There's a gap in my memory after Dalton, well, let's be honest, after I disarmed the bomb at Parliament. I'm missing information about what happened after I was taken offline. But from what I can infer, an unknown hacker group identified only as Zero Day was involved. I believe this Zero Day staged the attacks and framed DedSec for their dirty work. Come to my terminal. Sabine is requesting a video call. This is London Calling. You're listening to Buccaneer your pirate podcast source for what they don't want you to know. I'm Tash, and this time we're giving a special shout out from us to the boys and girls at the Signal and Intelligence Response Service, better known as SIRS. Why not? They're going to be listening anyway. They're listening <laughs> to everything. They probably know that you're listening to this show right now, but don't worry. We're not going to say anything bad about a massive, unaccountable spy organization that uses its powers to stifle dissent and shut down free speech. Instead, we're going to look at how SIRS became so powerful. And as usual, we'll keep everyone's names and location secret so SIRS doesn't come looking for them. Charles is an expert in the dark arts of surveillance who worked to set up democratic media in post-communist states. How did it go so wrong in Britain? <laughs> You know, we're looking at all the wrong things when we look at Britain's crisis. There's a lot of uh, concentration on data and how that's been used and, and manipulated. And what we haven't looked at is the power structures and the profit that lies behind this. For example, if we examine what actually happened, you know, there's a, there's a company that's really very interested in uh, selling passports and making it easy to uh, provide visas for investment and so on. And historically, throughout the world, they've been working with this big data manipulation company in order to overthrow governments. And then suddenly, all the chickens came home to roost. Nobody could find any receipts for what was paid for. Nobody could figure out how things were done. But everybody had a feeling that something really stunk and they couldn't figure it out. And yet, it was standing there in their face the whole time. There's a couple of different ways that we got where it is that we are. I mean, one, you have a lot of uh, smaller organizations, smaller power groups, uh, companies as well, um, who are bending things just a little, oh, we'll compromise a little bit, we'll bend the rules a little bit, um, and try to achieve what it is that we hope to achieve that's good for us. And, and if you add all of that up, what you end up with is a big wall moving in a big way um, from a lot of little 
little buttons being pushed, but also there's this other thing that's going on here is the gathering of data and the analysis of data has authoritarianism contained within its DNA. Um, it is by its nature a tool for authoritarianism, uh, and it has been used in that way. How does big data look into our lives? James covered it for the pre-crisis press. We're starting to see the merger of private data and that with data held by the state into what are called social credit systems. This is where every aspect of your behavior is monitored and totted up by a central system to sort of score you as a person, a bit like a credit card, but predicated on all of your behavior rather than just uh, the money you're spending. And this can have profound impact. We're starting to see systems emerge which will punish you and stop you from doing things in society based on your behaviors and this can be as trivial as if you jaywalk if you cross the road in the wrong place you might lose points if you uh, do some community activities uh, or help your neighbors you might earn points and, and then this can be used to sort of evaluate you as a person and this could mean for example better travel privileges being able to travel first class or being denied from traveling first class to not being allowed to travel at all uh, these systems are very real and very possible because of all of the data that has now held on us Ian was a veteran political writer and podcaster back in the days of pre-crisis Britain. Is the world we're living in now fascist? Well, this is what fascism is. It is the complete and total control of the individual. The desire to basically say to the individual, nothing in your life matters. On an individual basis, you are now part of the whole, part of the nation. And the only meaning that you will find in your life is to become part of the nation. What is a nation? The nation doesn't mean anything, right? The nation is basically just encapsulated by the leader that takes over, that claims that he, you know, has this sort of access to the soul of the country, to the soul of the people. He never does, it's just a myth, but that's what they go for. And on that basis, they take the right to control every aspect of your life, from who you talk to, to where you eat, to where you go to hang out with your friends. I mean, what we're seeing now is a contemporary iteration of this process where you get corporations and the state operating in tandem, basically molded into one another. But that isn't that rare. I mean, you saw exactly the same thing in Nazi Germany. You look at the concentration camps that operated in Nazi Germany, there were private companies in those camps making use of that slave labor. Fascism often works with corporations and it's doing the same now. That's the way in which they track what you do. That's the way in which they track who you talk to. They operate as each other's proxies. So if your ears are burning and you think someone might be watching you, you're probably right. They're watching all of us. I'm Tash and you've been listening to Buccaneer. Keep listening, keep sharing the show and keep it encrypted. They're watching us, but we're watching them too. I'm Tash, and this time we're giving a special shout out from us to the boys and girls at What this way? Did I go this way? I don't remember. I did. Not, I mean. Well, there's a ooh. Okay. Hello and welcome to today's episode of The Upload. We're talking about the optic and how it's changed our lives. Now, as you remember, Bloom announced a new version of the Optic at the recent Tone Conference, but we haven't heard too much about that since due to the dramatic events there. Let's cast our minds back and consider the technology. I mean, the Optic changed everything. It lets you see things in AR. You no longer need a smartphone. You just have the small implant that sends signals to your optic nerve and lets you see your emails, take calls, and browse the internet directly as if the screen was in front of your eyes. Instead of having to carry around a phone, you've just got the small handheld unit. So much lighter and so much more convenient. It's great. Vicky, you sound like you absolutely love <laughs> the optic. Do you actually think that it's made our lives any better? I mean, sure, it's definitely made things a lot easier. It's so simple to call someone now. All you have to do is choose who you want to chat to and they're there, ready to talk. And browsing the web is so much easier. I remember when you used to have to sit down at a computer with an actual keyboard and mouse and type everything out. And my favorite feature is public transport. With the Optic, you can just walk straight onto the tube. It even acts as a passport. No longer do I have to dig around and try and find my old paper passport just to travel somewhere. Also, I thought that Optic's marketing strategy, making it free for people, was a stroke of genius. 
genius. Bloom was really calculated when it was doing that. It was pushing this draconian device on us at all. Sure, everybody flocked to it. There was free Wi-Fi and phone plans. That definitely helped, but it wasn't a case of this is a product that you need in your life. Why do you hate it so much? It's just the worst because you had to give up your privacy expectations and accept surveillance. It was almost like the government and Bloom didn't even need to make the optic mandatory. Making it mandatory was only to get the last holdouts across the line. If free data didn't convince you, fines and arrests from the state for not having the optic would pretty much be enough. I mean, what do you mean by privacy problems? No one really talks about that anymore. They don't talk about it because we don't have any choice when it comes to the optic. Yes, it's convenient and mandatory, but everybody's forgotten what it really means. Here, you've got a whole company owning basically all the data about your life. Bloom can see everything that you can see. Nothing is private anymore. There are so many times when I don't want anyone to have a clue about where I am, who I'm chatting with, what I'm doing. It's not even dodgy stuff, but I just don't want anybody to blackmail me with this in the future by hacking it. And because of Bloom's contracts with the government, it isn't just Bloom that can see everything I do, it's the government. The UK as a state has become a complete surveillance paradise. I think you're painting a bit of a bleak picture. It's not all that bad. No, you're completely wrong on this. I don't want everybody tracking me wherever I'm going around London. Well, in that case, you might be interested in some rumours I heard. Did you hear that some DedSec hackers have found a way to bypass the Optic's connection with Bloom? Are they actually making it better or usable or actually friendly for anybody? Well, word on the street is that they've been able to create an encrypted signal, which means that your world might have a chance of becoming a bit more private again, so you could go back and enjoy all the great things about Optic without that fear of surveillance. With the Optic, privacy's dead. Patting in Sabine Brandt now. I suggest you listen very closely to anything she has to say. There you are. I'm glad you made it. Backley. God, it's good to hear your demented little voice. Is your memory intact? Not even slightly. The last record I have is of our HQ being raided. My only lead is a group known as Zero Day. Ring any bells? No. But the HQ was attacked by some men in black. The same that were at Parliament. Maybe working together. We didn't stand a chance. They just gunned everyone down. My god. How'd you survive? I managed to escape through the sewers to Camden. A contact smuggled me out of the city, and I've been hiding out in the north since. Prudent. Your profile is red flagged as a high priority target in the city's surveillance system. Even a partial recognition hit would have you hunted down and shot on sight. There aren't many DedSec fans in London these days. Look, I want to help, I do, but joining up with you now verges on suicidal. Listen, if anyone knows anything about risks, it's me. I lost everything and everyone. But it comes down to this. London is in a death spiral. And if DedSec can't pull it out, trust me, oh. no one can. The city needs a resistance. And it starts with you. What do you say? Fine, but you owe me. Excellent. New user registered. Welcome to DedSec. <gasps> I fucking thought so! Now, it would be irresponsible of us to release... Hold that thought, Bagley. I fucking thought so! Her voice has been so familiar to me since the start of the game. Sabine Brandt is voiced by... Olivia Morgan, who is the same voice actress who did Mary Reed in Assassin's Creed 4! Hell yeah! You naked and mewling into the wild. You'll find equipment around the safe house that are essential items in your dead set kit. All right, spider bots, spider bot, spider bot. Hmm. 
AR camouflage to render the wearer invisible to br and break line of sight. Ooh, I like that. Yo, I just realized because of the fact that everybody has the, is required to have these optic uh, B, uh, AR devices. If you could hack that, like DeadSec could, you could easily cloak ha your. Oh my god, that's genius. Okay, I am absolutely buying that. Holy fuck, I love that concept. Uh Ooh. Yes, please. Oh, look at that beautiful car. Ah, uh, okay. All right. Aiden Pierce! He's currently unavailable, but hell yeah! Oh man! Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Oh man, he's got a nice bushy beard there. Darcy Clarkson, an assassin! Hell yeah! Oh, man. Rich! <laughs> Occupation, your future husband. Ah, okay. Hi, buddy. All right. All right. Okay. These are all unavailable for now. Okay. We have a sophisticated system for hiding your identity from facial recognition tech. It's called a mask. And while we're here, perhaps we can talk about updating your wardrobe. I mean, look at you. Come on. I mean, she's got a pretty good outfit, I would think. All right. Oh, we could change her hair. Okay. So it's not just, okay. It's not just outfit, it's whole ass look. Okay. We give her a beard, we could give her a beard. Okay, I'm gonna mess with this too uh, after I, you know. But so this is the one I picked up earlier. <laughs> Fuck. 
from Ubisoft because I have Assassin's Creed Odyssey. <laughs> Look at that beautiful thing. That's a work of art right there. Pig head. In the actual game. Uh, from Ubisoft. Ooh, I kind of like that. I kind of like that. From Watch Dogs 1, Watch Dogs 2. Oh, man. Ah. Uh, I think I like this one the most. Yeah, at least for her. Marcus's top. Oh, I like that. And there's Aiden's. That one's the assassin one. Ah, oh, I like it. But no. Uh I don't want to spend too much time on this right now. Uh I will absolutely be dealing with this stuff. Oh man, look at all of this stuff. Ah, uh, okay. You've got all these fancy new toys, but it's also important to know the basics. You need to learn how to throw a punch and how to take one. Albion will escalate if you come at them with a gun and shoot you down. We want to avoid collateral damage. In DeadSec, we try to use guns only as a last resort. Have you already met Connie Robinson? She owns the pub and is an old DeadSec contact. Not to mention a champion amateur boxer. Go to the practice ring and she'll show you how to stop flinching when someone cocks a punch at you. I'll be right down. Could use the warm up. Some operatives can infiltrate restricted areas. Okay. Go for some basic strikes. Hit me. Don't be shy. You want to get in under my block. Find the weak point. You're getting it! Couldn't have done that better myself. Quick on your feet now. You want to create distance? Just like that! You're getting it! Jesus. a number on her shit regret there's only one more skill you need to master socialization the rest of your team has arrived why not go and have a chat welcome to the team yes well i'm ready to help however i can There she is. Good day. Our local badass. Wow. I can't believe we're really doing this. 
Strange they don't, like, certify us dead sec first or something. I think we just have to figure it out as we go. Now that you're all as thick as cyber thieves, Sabine would like to talk to you. This is London Calling. You're here with me, Tash, on Buccaneer, your source for what they don't want you to know. In today's world, we've all had to get used to our every move being tracked by the optic on our temples, by the cameras around us, and with every click we make online. Seems like everything we do feeds the big data beast. Why are data giants like Bloom so hungry to get hold of our private information and our metadata? What are they using it for? Will we ever have real private lives again? What is privacy in the digital world? And what happens when capitalism and surveillance become one? As you know, we keep all names confidential on Buccaneer. Speaking from a secure location, here's new technology strategist Charles, who worked all over the world trying to keep democracy strong in the face of the data assault. If you have enough personal data on somebody, you're able to predict what it is that they're going to do. You can tell what they might be passionate about, but mostly you can tell what they fear. And if you can tell what someone fears, then you can manipulate them and you can move them in particular directions. Like, data is collected on citizens in every possible way. Data is collected through surveillance cameras. Data is collected from television sets. Data is collected from voter records. It's collected from how much power do you use in your house and how much water do you use in your house. In pre-crisis Britain, we got really used to all of our services being free. Everything suddenly became free that was digital. But what people forgot is that if you're not paying for it, then you're the product being sold. If technology brings out the worst in capitalism, Not capitalism brings out Only the in worst capitalism. in technology. Senior academic Alfie tells us how big business repurposes big data. Historically, what's happened, of course, is that people have traded their, their privacy for their convenience as, as smartphones and other kinds of technology Yvonne, are you there? And became mass-consumed, mass-used items and technological objects. Gradually, people were so attracted to the, the affordances of these technologies that privacy kind of retreated into the background and into a state we've got now where it's essentially gone. Having this access to this data you see what I'm looking at? tech companies like Bloom so much more powerful than, than they would be otherwise and not just in the obvious ways. Of course, there's a lot of uh, worry and, and fear over what they can do with the data, they can track anyone, find anyone, see what every individual is doing at any point in time. But I think there's even deeper reasons why this data empowers these huge companies to control our society and, and make us do things. So lots of predictive technologies which are implemented by these tech giants, it's not only interested in knowing what we're going to do, but influencing the patterns of our movement. So technologies might suggest routes to use in the city, places to go, restaurants to go to, cafes to go to, music to listen to. And these suggestions are not just predicting what we might like to do, they're actually influencing the way citizens move, think, eat, meet, and, and use their city as a space. So London has become a place where a small group of, of, of surveillance capitalist companies like Bloom can control the movements of individuals and, and orchestrate the way they, they move around their city and the way they essentially live, the things they do, the things they, they enjoy, and, and the life they lead. So we're really kind of outsourcing our decision-making, I would say, to, to a huge corporate capitalist company. And there's something very, very scary about that indeed. All these technologies can be used to, to not only influence us to act as the perfect consumer, but also to prevent us from doing radical and revolutionary things. So technologies in, 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 in foreign nations have, that have been used are things like um, heat map features which show where populations are gathering. Uh, In-game rewards can be offered to people to take different routes, things like that. Uh, traffic data can be manipulated to prevent people gathering and, and protesting, as has happened in, in some of the authoritarian regimes across the world recently. Uh, so what we're looking at is, is not only um, a set of technologies which make people behave as, as ideal consumers, but ones which actually can be put to use to prevent radical and, and disruptive behaviour in the city, which, which limits the, the power of any kind of revolutionary force. So if you thought you had a private life, get used to it. You don't. 
and we're not going to reclaim our lives without a fight. I'm Tash, and you've been listening to Buccaneer, keeping the resistance informed. Keep listening, keep fighting, and remember, nobody owns you but you. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Sorry, I was just dicking around because it, it's, it's a phone booth, a, 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 a public a police box, a blue, a blue police box. Fine. Okay. <gasps> ah, excuse me. Well done, team. It's good to see the safe house filling up again. The only way we're going to keep London from falling into total oppression is by rebuilding the resistance. We need to recruit, train, build back our arsenal. The people are itching to rise up and take their city back. We just need to show them that Dead Sec are fighting along with them. I agree. This city is being picked apart by scavengers and they must be stopped. Albion's presence here is a ticking time bomb. If we don't get rid of them, we're done for. And Clan Kelly, they're preying on the most vulnerable. We need to take them out too. Fair, but remember that this zero-day hacker group is still out there. They took out DedSec once, and it's a good bet they'll try again. I believe they were responsible for the bombings and framed DedSec. With your help, I plan to get to the bottom of this mystery. I'd say that's a full docket. Enough talk. Let's unfuck London. First order of business. The Signals Intelligence Response Service, or SIRS, or the Earl Grey Gestapo, have developed a surveillance technology called AR Reconstruction. It's the bleeding edge of privacy rights violation, and thus it could be very useful in our attempts to find Zero Day. Swap is unavailable, okay. All right. some damage control to do if we want to change the perception that we're a bunch of violent thugs. I'll let you be the judge of how best to handle yourself, but remember, you represent DedSec now. I've located an interesting potential recruit for you. They claim to have recently escaped from, and I'm paraphrasing here, an evil lab. I can't verify that, of course, but their abilities are real enough. I like her style. We should recruit her. I had the same thoughts. Wherever they came from, they'll be a valuable asset to the Resistance. I'll set up a meeting for you. I've marked a potential recruit for you. And by recruit, I mean a masked madman who hacked our optic channel and started telling everyone he was in charge. Well, I mean, I do have seniority. And who the fuck might you be? You see what I'm dealing with here? His credentials check out. Just give him something to do to get him off my ass, would you? All right, I'm flagging a new recruit for you. But you have to promise not to make a mess in your pants when you hear who it is. Go on. It seems none other than Aiden Pierce has made his way to London, and apparently he's a friend of Connie's. 
Is there anyone she doesn't know? Well, I'm impressed. Let's see if we can recruit him. I'm so excited! Okay. Alright. Alright. Recruit Mina, Wrench, and Aiden. Uh, I'm not going to end tonight without having recruited at least Aiden, if not also Wrench. Now, before I do that, though, team, can I swap to the person I really want to? Yes. That I really wanted to play as? Yes, I can. Okay. A resistance is only as good as the people in it. We're happy to have you. Oh. All right, let's fast travel to the safe house because I want to put a mask on her. Like her outfit is fire. But I want to put a mask on her because, you know, danger, Will Robinson. Um. Wardrobe, mask. Eh. Eh. Actually, no, I'll leave it as is. I'll mess with... I'll mess with details like this on the... In, in, and, um... at the in between streams that's the word i'm looking for yeah. aiden fucking pierce you can recruit a spy hey speaking of aiden fucking pierce due to heightened criminal activity dude word is you're looking for dead sex I know who you are. You can hide in plain sight from most people, but most people don't know what to look for. You could really make a difference, you know. Join DedSec instead of sitting home on your ass. Look, I've never really been into team sports, but I'm gonna be here for a while. And the truth is, I like your bartender. I used to help her out on a sort of contract basis. I could do the same for you, if you want. Hells yes! Hoped you'd say that. See you in the field. Say hi to Connie for me. Be advised. Protests and other large assemblies will be met with force. All right. Can you believe this shit? Wait. Where is she? Oh, she right there. Please tell me you're from DedSec. If you don't tell me you're from DedSec, I think I might actually be crazy. I'm with DedSec. Oh, thank God. But I barely got out of that horrible place and then I got contacted by a Bagley. But it was being really rude and yeah, it just didn't seem real. But it is real, isn't it? Crying about it won't fix anything. Tell me what's wrong and maybe we can help. Well, I don't know, like, everything's fuzzy. Like, I just need a while to get my head right. The rude Bagley said you had a safe house I could use. Uh, I'll help you out in the meantime. Welcome to the resistance. Back here. Oh. Should have guessed. Should have guessed that was you, Daddy. Carry your identification cards and 
What's going on here? Is that any way to greet your new boss? <laughs> I'm fucking with you, come on. Everyone knows Desek doesn't have bosses. Think of me more as a cool older brother that you occasionally have naughty thoughts about. Mm. No, 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 I don't like this. Hey, <laughs> hey, I'm just a boy standing in front of a resistance group asking them to let me beat up some dudes with a sledgehammer for them. Is that so wrong? <laughs> Is it? Fuck it. Fine. Fuck yeah. <laughs> See, yeah I, I don't like uh, this. You, whatever your name is. <laughs> Dude. Dude gave her the ick and she said so. All right. That was great. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, nope. Nope. Not going to run around as them. I'm going to run around as her for a bit. Okay. Oh, put that away. Nothing? Nothing? Fucking Albion. Feels like the only way they'll go down is if it's brought down from the inside. Get away from me. Yvonne, how, re how real is this? A cop following a random, a random black person. How, how real is this? Oh, nice guy. There's wrench. Still following me? Okay, he bugged off. All right, good. Um. Um. Uh, Aiden. Strong arms. <laughs> but we were like one big beast, you know, ready for anything. Find that wrong here. Some bloody leadership to get us all fed as fuck. Huh? All right, let's go. Wait, what was what? What is that? A new mission. Resistance group requires operatives with specialized skills. Technical abilities, firearms handling, and physical training are all valuable. Bare knuckled boxing rings are a good place to find people who are good at throwing punches or taking them. By defeating each opponent in an arena, you'll have an opportunity to face its best fighter. Prove your physical superiority, and they may consider joining DedSec. I'm guessing that's some sort of primate society thing. This car doesn't have an auto drive. Or this bike, I mean. Oh, wrong side of the road. My bad. I'm a soy Americano. <laughs> A 
operatives can take parcels from any pickup box and deliver them to a specified destination box. Okay, so they have delivery side quests. I'll worry about that another time. All right. Get in there. In we go. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Captains will call reinforcements. Okay. In theory, the AR reconstruction should allow me to use various sources of surveillance data to rebuild past events. Access a data relay, and I can scrape all the metadata for this area. Now, let's take this autocratic wet dream for a test drive. This is so cool. It's almost like conjuring up the city's ghosts. You're right. We definitely need this extremely cool thing I want for investigating Zero Day. Shit, for some reason I can't clone it to our servers. All right, access the network here and let's see if we can't find out where to nick one. <laughs> Woo! Ragdoll!
You've located the CTOS hub. Aha! The SIRS has deployed this technology at their HQ, and I've just nabbed their manual on how to set up the system. Now, Scarpa, you can't steal their toy if they throw you in the gulag. Ah, there's a that looks like a collectible that down there. If I had a drone, wait. Can I? Yeah, if I had a drone, I could probably get that. Oh well. What's this box? Over here. Here? No. Hmm. Okay. Bagley, what do we need to do in order to get the AR reconstruction tech? The program is hosted on a server that's on the roof of SIRS HQ. All you have to do is grab the whole thing, then take it to a few high-density locations so I could recalibrate it to the Deadset network and clone my own version. You're just gonna drop, get the server off the roof, real casual like that, are you? We need to find someone with access to a cargo or construction drone that can fly it off of there. Perfect opportunity to recruit a heavy lifter to the cause, I'd say. Oi, you got a lead on this heavy lifter, Bagley? Well, let's put our thinking caps on, shall we? Now, who in London would have access to a construction drone? Could it be a construction worker? Oh, yes. Thanks for that brilliance, Bags. Not so hard, was it? There's an active construction yard nearby. I dare say you'll probably be able to find a construction worker to recruit there. Here's the coordinates. The demands of being a DedSec operative are all-consuming, so taking app gigs is a good way to make some extra quid that works around your new schedule. Lots of people will pay well to have their sensitive packages handled with care. And some will even pay you for deliveries. Ha ha! I guess they don't quite fit the bill. Maybe another time. Hmm. You need to find a construction worker. Working on it. They don't have access to a heavy cargo drone. Distracted as well. Oh, they have a beastly drone friend. I mean, the person looks sufficient too. Nail gun, wrench, cargo drone, uniform access. Occupation? Check. Drone? Check. This could be the one. Ooh, her. tell you're a fighter you ready to fight for the people are you dead sec thank the lord i could use your help we'll try and that's more than most what's going i was sick and had no way to pay my medical bills clan kelly said they'd take care of me except now i'm basically trapped forever working off what i owe them help me get free of clan kelly yeah all right i'll rally the comrades Clan Kelly will bleed our new friend dry if we don't do something. This particular construction site is a money laundering front for a Kelly chapter out of Camden Market. Any record of the debt would be stored there. Yep, yep.
guy's nearby. Let's let's send her there. Guy, I need some help. Hello. Bagley here. How did everything go earlier? Fine. We may have a new member. Next task. What is the screen thing down here? Is it this? No. Oh, it's this. Tech point, hell yeah. Alright. Poor woman. Did not deserve that. Alright, that's still recharging, so I'm just gonna let it be. Alright. While the drones observing your every move might make you feel like you're living in a city-shaped prison, what's bad news for society is good news for DedSec. You can hack those nosy little buggers and use them to scout ahead. Christ, the place is crawling with Kellys. This is a highly organized operation they're running. When did they get so sophisticated? You're looking for a terminal or some kind of device that Clan Kelly would have stored the debt records on. Putting our new friend back into the black and more importantly out of Clan Kelly's reach. Great. Oh, I can't go into the live nude show. Shame. Probably for the best. This has not gone well. This has not gone well. Oh god. Okay, so we're gonna just yeet ourselves out of here. Let's 
Oh, wrong button. Shit. Open. Oh god. Changing position. Get over here right now. Oh god. Somebody's coming. Uh. Oh, she hates dead sex. I mean, she'd hate. I'd hate Dead Sec too if they knocked me the fuck out. Oh, look at her go. Girl, climb the Fine. Fine. Come, come on, climb the thing. There you go. Oh, fuck me. Is that nothing? 
Transfer complete. All right, let's get her out of here. We just wiped your debt with Clan Kelly. Consider yourself a free agent. You don't have to slave away for them anymore. Bless up, Dead Sec. I know not to judge a book by its cover. The rumors about your squad being shady, it's got no truth. Dead Sec is looking to fill the ranks. You should join. Count me in. Do I not have anybody nearby? Guess not. Shit. Okay. <sighs> um... Aiden's closest. Let's have him go. I'll still join a scan. Are you ready for a new operation? Good timing. Just lost a tail. Do you require support? Nah, they're long gone. Let's go. Look at this badass! And that is how it's done. Come on. Ooh, that was a kick. All right, fuck this shit. We have an armed target. Over. Nope. I didn't do shit. Let's make things interesting. The most Aiden Pierce thing for Aiden Pierce to do. Be advised, we are on the trail. Are you? You sure about that? Because I'm on foot and I'm still out running, you guys. Negative. Move, no people. Shit. Over.
<clears throat> Control, put out an APW. Target Ooh. is gone. This is getting out of hand. <coughs> Forget it. Well, they're everywhere like fucking rats. Oh, excuse me. We'll be wrapping it up here shortly. The Dead Sec resurgence have prompted Parliament to approve the use of lethal force for Albion contractors. CEO Nigel Cass had this to say. Dead Sec terrorists will quickly find that Albion, unlike the police force of this city, is battle tested and proven in the field. The Prime Minister's office has called this shoot to kill mandate a drastic but necessary. Ready to take the plunge. This is for you. This ain't no little thing. My life won't be normal. Not even resistance fighting. Nothing's normal when your government hires a PMC to fire on its own citizens. A truth you are talk. I may want to run with you. But what about all of my responsibilities? The choice you have now is if you'll fight to protect what you care about. Yeah. All right. We're ready. Welcome to the resistance. Oh, Uncle Aiden. Right. Welcome aboard, etc., etc. I'll give you the speech later. Right now, we need you and your Aiden, big, strong you drone wearing? friend to get on top of SRS HQ and steal a server. Think you can handle that? Going there now. Actually, we'll cover that next time. Uh, give. I'll take some chance. I'll take some time. Run around. Uh, run around. Get, grind some currency and you know customizations and stuff like that all all the all the boring stuff that you guys wouldn't won't, won't want to see on stream but um that's it for the night um we'll be back friday with the final chapter of tell me why um until then you can check out these amazing people i have listed up here i have even more recommendations in that link tree below um, also in that link tree are links to my socials, my Discord, my um, uh, Patreon, which is also listed right there, my throne wish list, and so on and so forth. Places where you can find me and help me out and all those wonderful things. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited. I know it doesn't feel like we went got too far in this game uh yet but i also know that it is a relatively massive game um and there's just so much so um yeah i can't wait to keep uh, keep going with the storyline um but uh that'll have to happen next time um so so until friday remember to have empathy be kind be safe Love yourselves and love everyone around you, and I will see you all next time. I love you all. Peace out.